now, and it's on NPR. This week's IONMPI is from ST. Every single week we do IONMPI brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. This is where we look at new product introductions and PI. Mm -hmm. And the place that we yeah, like, on it. yeah, the place that we like and we think has the most NPIs is digikey.com. So well, they've gotten lots of new products all the time. So go do. to digikey.com slash new. And that's how I find uh, what I'm going to cover really? in INPI. Yeah. So, yeah. It's not a secret. We, um, back in the day when um, our website was a lot smaller mm. and there was people trying to do bad stuff to our website, mm. we noticed that some of our competitors at the time, every morning they would look at adafruit.com slash new. I would too. It's and a that's how they would figure out what they wanted to try to uh, do next because we were always coming up with really good stuff. Yeah. And that's what you kind of do, too. I do the same thing. Yeah. I, I am... So you go to digikey.com slash new to stay... I go to everybody's site slash new, but yeah. digikey.com slash new is where you'll get all the latest and component NPIs. So this week, the newest, latest, hottest yes. from ST. Okay, so uh, this week from ST, we've got the ST25DV. Um, I actually really liked uh, when I saw this pop up because I was like, hey, I know this chip. I even made a breakout for this chip, so I know a lot about it. Um, and I know what it can do, so I thought this would be a really good NPI because I can really talk to you in depth. Um, there's also a lot of good information from ST about this chip. Um, so this chip is a um, dynamic NFC RFID tag I see with four 16 or 64 kilobit EEPROM, fast transfer mode capability, and optimized I2C. It comes in a bunch of different packages. You can see it comes in four different packages there. Uh, and it's an NFC chip. And this is an interesting... Um, chip because when a lot of people talk about RFID or NFC, they think about RFID tags that look like this. And if you see, um, you know, there's the card and the sticker and the circular tag. But if you look at the, the clear tag or the clear key fob, um, you see that there is an antenna made of coil of wire. It's kind of like a made of magnet wire, so it's reddish or orangish. And in the center, there's like the silvery blob with only two pads on it. And um, that's an RFID chip that is fully powered and takes data over the RF link created when energy enters um, the coil, that is, you know, the the data and power transfer. Um, RFID and NFC. NFC is kind of a, a, a it's it's a near field communication, so it's a larger scale thing than RFID, which is a very specific thing just for identification. Um, so I'll just kind of refer to it to NFC, but a lot of people use the two terms kind of back and forth. Um, so these tags, they have memory built in, and you can read, write, or authenticate through them. So oftentimes they're used as, you know, um, public transport identification, or you um, have RFID NFC in your credit card. Um, they're very inexpensive, and they're great if you want to just transmit a small amount of data without needing a battery. However, they're not smart. Like, you can't run code or, like, have the data inside the tag change on the fly. Like, whatever you write to it is what you read from it next time. It's just... It's just a little piece of memory that is powered and has data over RFID. Um, so this, which is, this is the breakout we have, um, this chip is interesting because it has that same coil antenna you see at the top, the, the coil antenna um, that's built into the circuit board. You could, of course, use an external antenna, but, uh, you know, it's convenient to have it printed onto the PCB. It's inexpensive. Oh, it's a little bit large. And um, over I2C, you can communicate to it so you can read or write data over I squared C or through RFID. And so that gives it a kind of a, a dynamic ability to act as a bridge between NFC communication and microcontrollers that don't have NFC. It's quite rare for a microcontroller to have NFC built into it. But this chip, which is very inexpensive, lets you bridge that data um, and do it. It's useful for a couple different things. Um, so uh, because we already have this breakout in the store, here's an example. When this phone uh, goes over the tag, it's been pre-programmed with a URL. You can see that it's the product URL. Um, and we program that in the factory. But what's interesting is, of course, if you had a microcontroller attached to it, you could change what tag, what the data is read from the tag on the fly based on whatever data you like. So you can use it as a way of advertising data sort of the way Bluetooth does, but without any batteries. So inside, um, you know, it itself is not a programmable microcontroller. It is only I squared C or RFID, but it's got a couple cool things going for it. One is it uses ISO uh, 1593, which is not what most people think of as, you know, classic 
my fair or my fair does fire or my fair light or whatever it is a different protocol so you know it doesn't necessarily work with our pn 532 breakouts but it does have support from like pretty much every modern phone ios and android phones if it, they have nfc support they'll support um this chip inside is um both a dynamic ram buffer and an eprom buffer the dynamic buffer is just faster to write the eprom buffer is you expect you write it and it is maintained over you know 100,000 cycles or more um, it also has this cool energy harvesting uh, capability, which I think is neat. And I'll show you a little demo of that in a bit, not a demo from me from uh, ST. Um, so one thing that is nice about this um, ISO uh, format is compared to most, it can actually go much farther. I will say that um, the distance is dependent a lot about whether, how, how good the antenna is. So at the bottom where you see it's like, you know, a couple of feet up to a meter, it, you know, you, that's for a, not a phone, it's for my dynamic um, reader with a good antenna. Uh, speaking of which, one thing that I thought was really cool is um, ST has an uh, e-design e website where you can uh, dynamically design um, the antenna you need based on, in, in the data sheet it tells you what the, um, you know, based on the frequency and the built-in capacity you can tune, what inductance you want, and then you can use this tool. Um, you can say how physically large you want the antenna to be, and it'll tell you the trace width and the number of turns and the inductance. So it kind of does, like, this math is a total pain to do uh, by hand. So I, I used this tool when I designed the antenna for the um, NFC breakout. Um, it does have energy harvesting built in. This is also kind of neat because a lot of people like the idea of energy harvesting. Um, it has some use cases where not only would the uh, ST25DV be powered um, over the energy harvesting from the NFC um, electromagnetic waves, but also you could have an external circuit connected. And so uh, there's even an LDO built in, so you see it won't go above uh, 2.7 volts, um, but you can get up to, I think 2.7 volts, yeah, you can get up to uh, 1.1 milliamps to 7 milliamps based on um, the field strength and uh, the voltage that you want out of it and you're, you're willing to drive from it. You know, once you're getting into 4 milliamps, you can drive uh, a a low power microcontroller can run off of it for a short amount of time. So, you know, if you want to do some data transfer from microcontroller or from a sensor, using NFC uh, could be preferable to something like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi where you need a battery. I'm using a coin cell here because this is a common uh, low power battery source. But, you know, there's, there's a big gulf between having no battery, right, having a totally energy harvesting solution and having a battery. Once you have a battery, suddenly you have to deal with replacing the battery, you know, having it be replaceable, so you have to be able to open the case and remove it. You have to make sure the battery doesn't get damaged or there's like chemical corrosion. If it's in there too long, if it's a rechargeable battery, you have to recharge it. You know, batteries, it's like, it's not just the cost of the battery. There's a lot of support circuitry and design required for it. So if you know, you can get away with not having a battery, um, I think that could be interesting. Here's a design uh, for a uh, e-ink, um, a tag that is completely uh, data is transmitted we programmed over NFC now you're gonna have to hold that NFC tag fairly close so it can go through the update cycle which takes 20 seconds but you don't have a battery maybe you prefer that maybe from a meter away this is uh, this is useful enough um, there is a library for the ST25 DV this is the I squared C side of course from the NFC side, you know, you just use it according to any API you've got for iOS or Android. Um, it acts as a normal tag. It, the, the mobile device does not know the difference between it and any other ISO, whatever, 15963 tag. Um, there's also the K and the KC version. I'll say I looked for a little bit, and I believe the big difference is um, there's, a, there's a couple little details, but you can change the I2C address of the KC family. Otherwise, it seems like they're pin-to-pin -pin compatible and uh, functionally very, very similar. So you can you can pretty much use either. I've used the K because um, the KC was an app. I'm going to check the details of this more. And best of all, they're in stock. That's right. Love Real it. On when the INPI is in stock. So pick it up. Um, you can use our open source design if you want to, to get started. There's also eval boards from ST. Um, but I think it's an interesting way. You want to transmit data to and from a mobile device not have to deal with deployment, not have to deal with Bluetooth or pairing or batteries. This could really be a good solution. You know, um, there's, you know, there's a couple of presentations on the ST website um, with demonstrations of what they think it could be, 
good for. So, um, All right, and we have a video. Do you want to play it? Yeah, let's play um, the video. This is from ST showing their sensor tag, right. which uh, is an, another product that uses um, this chip and a microcontroller to uh, data log and then transmit that data log data uh, to a mobile device. Okay, it's two minutes. See you on the other side. Hi, I'm Jim Barlow with uh, ST's NFC RFID Marketing. Uh, we're here at Sensors Expo in uh, San Jose, and we're introducing our new low-power NFC t sensor tag reference design. It highlights many of our low-power sensors for your design, such as the uh, low-power accelerometer, barometer pressure sensor, humidity and temperature sensor, and our low-power Cortex-M0. Uh, what the sensor tag allows you to do is uh, completely, this entire board can be read through an NFC field from your phone, for instance, and can be completely powered has the, through the energy harvesting uh, capability of the NFC uh, IC on here, the ST25DV uh, NFC dynamic tag. You can completely power up this microprocessor and these sensors and read that data. But we've designed this reference design to now allow you to enable in your designs the ability to data log. So you can design, um, you can test. Like for instance, you could test if something stays cold during shipments, if it uh, encounters vibrations, or maybe heat during the shipment. And then uh, when you come in range of a near field uh, communications, you can take that data log uh, information out and uh, make intelligent decisions. Like, for instance, if you had a case of wine shipped to, to you at your home and you're wondering why it tastes bad, you can detect that it you know, was stored at too high of a temperature. So this uh, new reference design is now available on ST.com, and we look forward to uh, you designing and being very successful with your projects. Thank you. All right, and uh, that is a thing, Sensor Expo. This is one, by the way, that's one of the places. Oh, that's right, yeah. This is one of the Kevin places we want to go to. Sensor Expo. Um, we, uh, we went to a couple of shows that I can't wait until we can do it again when we got our picking places we went to. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's giant commercial shows that have all this stuff, and Sensor Expo is one of them for that. So right. that is that this week's INMPI. Hi, I'm MPI.